This episode of ACMG Presents Talk Time Live is brought to you in part by Viewfinders Identity Search and Design. Your choice for web design, graphic design, and all multimedia development needs. Visit VFISAD.com and let us bring your vision to reality. Hey, this is Jeff Thorne. I am the writer, producer, showrunner of the Avengers Black Panther's Quest TV series. And you are listening to ACMG Presents Talk Time Live. It's time. Talk time. Let's go. Anime, comics, movies, and games. To come on and let's get it. Talk time. Anime, comics, movies, and games. To come on and let's get it. Talk time. Live. Anime, comics, movies, and games. To come on and let's get it. Talk time. Live. Anime, comics, movies, and games. To come on and let's get it. Talk time. Live. Started in the 80s with Matt Cross. Dudes in the hood might have called that soft. But I carried that cross like Jesus did. Fast forward, I teach the kids to learn how to let go. Live life and show love to all things that don't matter. Where y'all from? And luckily, there's a show called Talk Time. We've been waiting for this for a long time. Dax kicks the facts on all the geek news. Special guests and unbiased reviews. Suburban kids, the hipster street dudes. All can learn something new. Me too. I heard words when no faith is empty. I stayed the course, so my haters tempt me. Beep the podcast, that'll make them envy. It ain't too trendy. It's ACMG. Anime, comics, movies, and games. And come on and let's get it. Talk Time. Anime, comics, movies, and games. And come on. Come on and let's get it. Talk time. Live. Anime, comics, movies, and games. That come on and let's get it. Talk time. Live. Anime, comics, movies, and games. That come on and let's get it. Talk time. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Journal of My Life that covers all things anime, comics, movies, and games. This is ACMG Presents Talk Time Live, the Prime Show. I am your host, Xavier Josiah. Folks, we got some great news to talk about during this whole entire quarantine and COVID-19 phase that we're going through right now. And in the top of our hour, as you saw on the graphic, we got two reviews that we're going to be doing. This is double review week. This is actually double otaku review week on talk time live because we got two animes that we're going to talk about one's a series the other one is a movie one is on disney plus the other one is on netflix we're going to be reviewing future avengers i've been waiting to check this out uh for some time i haven't had a chance to but i got to sit down now that we're all quarantined in and actually check out the series so we're going to talk about that on uh our talk topic today along with Altered Carbon Sleeve. I haven't got a chance to ever watch the series, but damn if they made it into an anime, I can't, I can't, you know, resist. So I got to see what all the news is about with that. So we got to check it out. I'm going to talk about that on the talk topic as well. But we got some things that we're going to be talking about. But before we do go on to our first segment, I got to address something uh, that is going on on social media right now. For some, mostly the geek community, not everybody, but some people are still thinking about the important matter, which is COVID-19 and the coronavirus and in our safety and other people's safety and just keeping it safe. But every once in a while, we got people who are more worried about certain things that while enjoyable, while epic in its execution is not or shouldn't be the main priority of what we should be focusing on right now. There's a bigger situation happening right now with this pandemic that we have going on. And I don't think people truly understand the term or the word pandemic, a word that should never come in the face of our society and our country in the world. That one that we fear. (laughs) This is like code red to a T. And granted, while this is not like the biggest epidemic in a sense of it's killing everybody quickly and rapidly and thank goodness it's not it's still something we should not take for granted whether you're young or established and or rich or whatever it like don't take it for granted at all and there's some people who are still doing this mostly the younger generation from what we're told uh and it's causing more friction with the process of them handling this so first of all if you're out there and don't need to be out there stay your ass at home 
stay the hell home. If you don't have any form of business that requires you to be out there, stay home. If you're not working at a food area, if you're not a uh, medical staff, if you're not part of a first responder, you know, if you don't work at a bank, if any of those things that they re- that they require you to not to do, stay your ass home. You know, if you got to work out, fine. If you know jog, fine. Uh, ride a bike, fine. You know, you got your social distancing matters with that. But for the most part, it's just stay home or don't hang around a group of people because it's not helping. You see, you know, videos of people on a beach acting stupid and doing and taking it for granted. Like, come on, man. What are you doing? Even WrestleMania finally had to bow down to all this, you know? So what what does that tell you? What does that tell you? The Olympics is still up, up in the air. What does that tell you? But and when it pertains to the geek community, I had a guy not in the ACMG Facebook group. Thank goodness. They all got sense. They all have enough sense not to do this. But in another group that uh, I am connected with, they there's a guy who was more worried about a, an event. And I won't just name the event. <laughs> and that is happening this year. And just worried about whether they're going to be closed or whether or not they're going to happen or not. And I'm in my mind. I'm like, there's so many things that are happening right now that that is far from our minds and let it be known let it be known that this message right here goes for mostly con goers and folks in general who want to attend events this year don't stress about these events that are that's most likely more than likely going to happen especially the big ones especially the really big events that are highly financed by some really big companies do not stress about them stress about the first responders and medical staff out there who are working hours on end to help those in dire situations due to COVID 19. those are the true superheroes that we should be stressing those are the ones that we should be celebrating and thanking and finding a way to help them that's who we should be focusing on think about the elderly who should be looking for, uh, who we should be looking for to protect, especially those who are healthy, who are able, and who can. If you know anybody in your neighborhood, look out for them. Be that superhero for them. Be that superheroine or whatever. Be that hero to the people in your community. That's what you should be stressing about. There's so many things right now that should be a first priority that going to, whether you're going to a con or a, an event is not. Let me tell you something. I was supposed, my wife and I was supposed to go to uh, a comedy show that was starring Martin Lawrence and Ricky Smiley and uh, um, Darnell Rollins and a whole bunch of other really top name um, comedians out there, black comedians out there. They just postponed it. I'm like, all right, bet. That's fine. They postponed it. We will go at another time. Let's make sure that we all get out of this okay. Let's make sure that we all get out of this healthy so we can enjoy all these things. So I have full confidence that we will get to enjoy another great group of events out there including that of you know keystone comic con that's coming up in august all the way in august or new york comic con um even if it doesn't happen even if it doesn't happen this year it's going to happen you're just going to have to wait a little bit longer uh there's no guarantee that san diego comic con is going to happen this year we don't know but even still fine you save up till next year you'll i mean like you'll just they'll rather you postpone it you get your refund back and you work on it next year they'll find a way but the fact of the matter is these big companies work tirelessly to make sure that everything's on tight even in a situation like this i'm sure they got a backup plan so i i really you know shout out shout out to the speaking of keystone comic con shout out to uh eddie betty mk uh stephanie and all the other crew in there i know they are going through all hell right now because you know repop just handles everything around the world so no shout out to them and all the hard work that they put in to do what they do um because you got people who just who's so self-centered and don't understand all the processes of what we need uh, what they go through and also what the priority is right now i mean like there's so many things that we need to stress right now but shout out to them as well but let's focus on working together and doing the right things to assure that everyone can come out of this healthy enough to enjoy this is not about just one this is about all and there's another thing i wanted to point out too 
we actually we we really need to get ourselves together um the, the way we act in our society it, it's just it, it's it's just really bad this is the worst thing to ever happen in years and if now is not the time to get ourselves together and really think about it you know it, it I, I said it one i said it a few weeks back that like social media really doesn't hide people's intelligence or lack of intelligence it exposes their lack of intelligence and i just i actually just saw a documentary called the great hack and that really explained everything i was talking about i highly recommend that people check that out on uh it's on netflix and it really tells about how social media manipulates us psychologically and such but it really tells how our society is in a sense that we uh, uh what we've become and what and also what we need to do so I, I i i implore you all please let's all actually if we truly want to be smart let's really work together as a unit and let's get through this but also let's make moves down the line to really make change and have peace in this country and in this world that's all i gotta say about that you know uh i changing the subject moving on to the subject um sort of wrestling fans i gotta ask which is a dumb question for wrestling fans <laughs> did you guys get a chance to see aew last week when they had their their first empty arena event in particular cody's heartfelt hard times promo and i say hard times because if you're a wrestling fan you know when we say the term hard times that's geared to cody rhodes his father dusty rhodes and probably one of the greatest promos of all time of him talking about real world situations and then being so emotional about it that it you know and passionate about it that it brings a tear to your eyes i'm not going front cody did the exact same thing with this promo addressing what's going on in the world right now as he was in an empty arena talking about the things that is going on and noticing that you know we are fans that are cheering from afar from a distance and they panned the camera to a empty arena and it was the most i i, I swear to goodness they set this up so beautifully. If you're even if you're not a wrestling fan, you gotta watch that first few minutes of that show and his speech about everything that's going on, and then you know, cheering us up to make sure that you know we're gonna get through this. Cody Rhodes is the father. He is the son of an American dream. <laughs> you know, where Dusty Rhodes was the son of a plumber, he is the son of an American dream, and that is true um it was just awesome i just wanted to point that out it's just it really 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 is the reason why i support that company and, and i really love it absolutely so uh man so folks that's all i want to talk about but we got some news to talk about in our next segment so let's not waste any time let's find out what's new in the world of acmg and now it's time to find out what's new in the world of acmg All right, folks, so when we last spoke, I re uh, remember mentioning the idea of movies going into pay-per-view due to the coronavirus and people not being able to go to theaters, uh, which unfortunately is going to drop box office sales for the theaters, as well as some of the movies. You know, there were some movies that came out. But remember, I was supposed to review originally uh, Bloodshot when that came out, but that didn't come out. Well, or it came out, but nobody was able to do it because they closed theaters down at the time. Well... I came up with the idea. It was like, you know, eventually it's inevitable in a sense that they're going to have to go to the streaming or pay-per-view route in order for us to see these movies. Well, it appears that it has, in fact, happened as The Hunt, Emma, Disney's own word, and The Invisible Man is now available on demand. Uh, it's up for Xfinity. I believe it's up for other uh, cable providers as well. Uh, this was a must as the spread of coronavirus continues to grow sales have and will hinder the lack of box office uh profit so studios ha had no choice but to uh, go about it that way to help out so other movies have said to be coming out early as well such as uh birds of prey next week uh this week actually um sonic the hedgehog is coming out this week bloodshot i believe will also be out this week and more to come so whether or not 
uh, this will end soon and things will open back up. At least there is another way that we can actually enjoy these uh, upcoming flicks. Now, I do want to point out, I don't know if people know, but in Japan, three uh, three sections of Japan have begun to open up because the uh, amount of people with the coronavirus has decreased. So we're going to be keeping an eye on them right now to see what in the world is going to be going on and how they're progressing it but that's actually a good sign some uh wrestling events have opened back up some big wrestling events have opened back up some of them with fifty thousand people in there so uh i know they've experienced it way before us so we're gonna probably keep an eye on it but that's actually a good sign of things to come so keep that in mind it doesn't mean anything yet until we see how they progress everything but just want to uh, put that out as a note too um i'm not sure how much this will affect studios financially but i have a prediction that oh, on what movies uh, that will no doubt make money and land uh on a video on demand if it if this prolongs from that time two movies i think will make big money on uh, on demand more than any one now marvel studios black widow guaranteed if, if we go to the point of may and we're still having to do the quarantine uh and we're still in quarantine that i believe that movie will be absolutely okay i think that's going to make a ton of cash worldwide on demand probably it'll probably break records for on demand i i i think while it while it's not going to be on a big screen and it deserves to be on a big screen and scarlett johansson deserves to have it on a big screen i absolutely believe that she can break grounds on another level and this can probably if if if, if i if my prediction is right and it makes like in, in the money that it that it should make this can probably change things in a sense um it, it possibly can so i have a feeling that this will be very successful whether it is on a big screen or small regardless um another movie i think that could actually do it too because of the intrigue and we've been waiting a long time for to see this movie is the new mutants which is fox's last literally last x-men movie that is uh that they made and it's been struggling to come out and it, it um, the irony of the fact that it's finally going to come out but then the coronavirus and COVID 19 scare comes in and just blocks everybody away it's like this this movie cannot catch a break i swear to goodness so uh that and fast and furious nine i like i think i think mother nature is trolling tyrese gibson right now <laughs> so we got that going on right now too but i think new mutants just by the intrigue of it is going to make money too um I, but i do think um black widow because of its connection to the marvel cinematic universe the fact that they have uh taskmaster coming in and, and uh, red guardian and a few other really cool surprises coming in there's no doubt that that movie is going to make bank no matter whether it's going to be on uh on a big screen or the small so i am i'm very much looking forward to to seeing that movie i don't care where hey if i gotta see it in the in the comfort of my own home i am i have no problem with that at all so <laughs> it's awesome i love to be around the the crowd i love to be around the actual uh theater uh group of people to see how their reaction and everything is but you know what it's better than having nothing and i think i'll enjoy it just as much at home and i get to scream as loud as i want at home this time too <laughs> so there's some advantages there's some advantages um you know i could you, you know if you've never been to like movie tavern you could just do a an at home movie tavern treatment with the movie and just you know order out or you know make a make a uh, really cool meal and have it right at your uh at your till i got theater seat um chairs in my house at two so it's like just sort of similar to um the ones at movie tavern except mine's is a little bit more uh has more cushion and more comfort to it and it lays all the way back just like it does in movie tavern so it'll it'll be an at-home uh, movie experience no doubt and i got my sound bar and everything to boost up this uh the sound Psh, we got this we got this <laughs> i'm looking forward to it so in other news and <laughs> for the first time in a long time we're going to talk comic books in this show. I have, I have, I can't even remember the last time I've actually mentioned comic books on the show. I think it was when we had the uh, the Digital Long Box podcast. That's the last time we actually had, uh, I think, believe, I think we did some after that. But here we go. We're going to talk comic books because I've actually read a few. And there's some that have been mentioned recently uh, that has stirred up some really, really interesting heat from... Uh, fans in accordance of marble 
Marvel has announced that they are going to reboot the comic series New Warriors with some new return, new and returning characters. I used to read uh, New Warriors during the 90s uh, solely because of Firestar. Because if you know Firestar's from, you know, Spider-Man, she premiered and debuted on the cartoon, the Saturday morning cartoon, Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends. And I was like, they brought her into the into the Marvel Universe. That's awesome. And now they got this new team with, with characters like Speedball and Night Thrasher and Namorita, who's um, Namor's uh, sister. So I was like, all right, bet. I'm digging this. I like the idea of this, uh, this going in. So... We decided to check it out, and I've been a fan of them ever since. But then I know years later when I stopped reading comic books, then comics wasn't as popular as it was. They started changing them around and made them into like a reality show type of deal, which led to Civil War. And things have not been the same. Speedball became penance and started torturing himself through the whole entire thing. And it was just it was a whole thing. It was crazy. So they decided to reboot, bring back the old team and old squad to some extent. So scheduled to return will be the leader, Night Thrasher, along with Namorita, Speedball and, of course, my favorite Firestar. Uh, And with also Rage, who I I I remember reading um, him on Sam Wilson's Captain America uh series and i believe he was partly like a good guy and a bad guy at the same time as well so but he was kind of like a professional wrestler he had a luchador mask and all that stuff so i dug it and he will be a part of the new warriors as well however the big focus is the newest additions to the team which has i i you know i was gonna say a few it actually is a lot of people now uh if you count twitter when I said a few, it was only the people in the ACMG Facebook group. But I looked at Twitter and I'm like, there is a, no pun, a firestorm, a firestorm, as opposed to firestar, of people that were riled up about it due to the gender. Some of it's due to the name, but others is basically to the gender identity situation as well. So there were two, there's two uh, arguments here. So Marvel introduced the protégés of the seasoned members in the form of a character called snowflake which has confirmed to be a non-binary character which means they uh do not refer them they refer to themselves uh by any gender and they refer to themselves as them or they so i know this because i have family who who uh who identifies themselves as the same thing so snowflake has the ability to create crystal snowflake shurikens or ninja stars for those who don't know that snowflake has a twin that goes by the name safe space who has a defensive ability of making force fields um that complements snowflake's ability of offensive so you know he the idea of him is that for what i understand from what the writer said is that um when he feels emotional and he's near somebody and he feels like he's trying to protect them that's when the shield comes up and when snowflake is able she uh they can actually uh project the crystals and you know use them as projectiles so the names were highly intended the names were highly intentional for the characters to take as a badge of honor despite its negative and derogatory meaning behind them <sighs> then we'll talk about that we'll talk more on that in a sec because i am both positive i'm positive about the characters i'm negative about the names in, in a sense but we'll talk about it in a minute screen time may be possibly one of the characters that i am not feeling due to his ability it's uh what do they call it a technopath i i look <laughs> i'm good with telepathic i'm good with telekinesis when you start trying to make it seem like you could talk to computers to me it does the logic of that to me doesn't make sense nobody can make any logic to how that i guess there's i see there's a possibility of somebody being somewhat telepathic that to me from a from a creative standpoint can make sense telekinesis possibly makes sense you talking to a computer a a object that is created by man and not by nature that to me makes no sense i they have they 
to me to me for me to um understand technopath they have to break it down in so much of a minute detail of why somebody can vibe with a computer and talk to a computer in a way that a computer can intelligently talk back or get or have so with unless without it being programmed it just doesn't make sense the logic of that does not make sense and that hopefully whoever comes up with this down the line can make sense of the technopath situation because i think that if not if not i think five years from now we're gonna look back at this and like that's the stupidest um, power ever i think somebody on uh twitter actually pointed out is like you know all this controversy about those the other two and people felt of um realize that marvel made google a superpower basically <laughs> that was i mean you couldn't put it better than that and it, it that's just a weird power so they named him screen time because of his ability but even worse is the origin of his story he apparently received his powers from get this an experimental internet gas i'm done i am done <laughs> what in the Hades? What the is that? How does that? What? What? <laughs> that gives you him the ability to connect psychically to with into with with the internet. What? <laughs> Did Google create a a Jarvis system or an Ultron system within Google that we don't understand? I don't I, I can't with this I can't that I feel like that was so stretched far out an experimental internet gas what the hell is that <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm I'm really perplexed about that right now this I mean the, the character this sounds like the even further this sounds like the um, same ability that you know the character TC on Black Lightning has which also boggles my mind on the logic that he could do that although to that to their credit i do like the character tc as a character himself he's a cool he's a cool i love the actor and he's a cool character so to that extent he kind of makes it for that simple when he gets the power it's like all right so we just supposed to just believe it this reminds me of how wwe goes into an empty arena and tries to do a promo as if the crowd is there but there's not there that's what that's how ridiculous that is to me so we got that and then down the line this one's a little bit okay with me then there is the living vampire b negative which is believed to be a life say uh to be a character that whose life was saved by the blood transfusion of michael morbius they haven't confirmed it yet but there's the logic of you know the fact that this character is like a living vampire much like uh it has the same abilities as michael morbius i think is going to lead down the line to that as well michael morbius not one of my favorite spider-man villains at all i don't i i just i i'm not a big fan of that he's at least my, my least favorite of them hopefully maybe jared leto can bring some you know light into this character but that's usually the the purpose of a lot of these movies is to bring light into characters that weren't really the big deal that's what happened with iron man if you guys remember iron man was not the main one of the most popular characters in the marvel universe during the 80s and the 70s and all this. he was like a side character compared to like spider-man and captain america it was john favreau and robert downey jr who helped make that character the main dude of the entire marvel cinematic universe in this case one of them like spider-man is captain america still up top like he's in that level now of all three of those of all of, of those two guys like he was the second tier dude at the time so um maybe jared leto can bring some you know bring it up a level with that who knows we'll see so the situation here with that and, and by the way there are more characters um in the group as well uh what is it also uh, let me lastly let me mention this too the last one trailblazer trailblazer is uh is a former false she's a former foster kid um i would be remiss if i mentioned that she's a really cool looking full figure black uh character um so they got all sorts of representation here and that's the this is the good part about what the book is trying to do is trying to bring that diversity in so that's great but it i think in its attempt it may be some things that they 
went about the wrong way in a sense. But Trailblazer looks like a cool character, though. Uh, she is a foster kid uh, who has no genetic powers, but has a backpack that was given to her by her grandfather, I believe, that holds a pocket dimension with infinite space that allows her to pull out a variety of objects, possibly in a cartoony type of way. Like Miss, how Miss Piggy just pulls out like a saw or, or a crowbar or whatever like that from her little purse. It's kind of like that. So they're, they're doing that whole type of situation. Um, but, you know, other than that, it's like there's there's some positives to this whole thing, but there's some definite negatives. And some folks on Twitter responded to the idea of Snowflake and Safe Space uh, as a negative, saying it's awfully uh, uh, it's awful, insulting and inconclusive. Uh, that the character that the company is pandering there may be possibly some truth to that there, I, there, I don't know what their original intentions is but it could be and a lot of times I it could be considered pandering if it's not done by a person of that community and that's when you kind of play on it to that situation like Something it, it it just depends on the situation and the person um, that you got to question sometimes. Did they have good intentions when they came when they bring or brought this character out? You know, are they trying to um, search for that target audience? You know, more than they are trying to bring respect to the characters and represent the characters right. You know, the whole badge of honor thing is that's where it gets tricky. That's where it's good. At least for me, it gets tricky. Um, there are more. There are others who just don't like the idea of a non-binary uh, character in comics. Now that to me is just BS. Um, that there shouldn't be any problem with any form of representation on any platform of any you know project or whatever. Anything. That's not the issue. Those people are just ignorant, and you know that's just there's no other way to say it they're just one-dimensionally minded and ignorant in that sense um so one of them which in my group which which was astounding uh in my acmg facebook group um claiming that it is an act of the sjw the social justice warriors uh who want more diversity but don't read comics that is so untrue that is such a general like a stupid general statement to make uh first of all because like i said I have a beloved family member in my fam uh, within my group in my family. Um, I raised this person, and they are actually comic book fans, even more anime and manga fans. So I would argue that point right there by saying that that's totally untrue. You absolutely like. How do you determine that? only a certain specific group of people read comic books you don't know you don't have the source you don't have the consensus the uh consensus um to even come up or the metrics or you know analytics to even claim that <laughs> you don't so shut the hell up on that note <laughs> and um shout out to the to one of my members of one of my great members of the ac i gotta really uh, sh uh shout him out for this um who said it best and uh who was it who was it because he always he always comes up i gotta shout him out real quick i'm blanking out it's like monday morning and i'm just i'm going crazy <laughs> so give me a sec here who was it i gotta because it was worth shouting out here uh, no that's not this one uh, now, granted, take note when I actually showed the cover of the New Mutants uh, book, people started, you know, warming up to it. Dennis Glover, <laughs> my man, um, Chef Dennis, Dennis Glover of my ACMG Facebook group. What I love about Dennis is that he tends to, he is what I call the anti troll. <laughs> he trolls, but he trolls the trolls that's the all he to me he's the equivalent of the punisher <laughs> when it comes to social media he is a guy that probably just murders for the sake of good <laughs> in a sense but he does it with his words and he said it. he really he really knocked it out he's like he basically what he said um he will never not be amazed at people's ability to get offended about something existing you cannot say it better 
Thank you, Dennis, for that one. Thank you so much for that, Chef. And he's right. He's absolutely right. There's always going to be somebody. And it's, and it's usually somebody with no knowledge or merit of what they're doing and what they're understanding. And even furthermore, why is it why is it another person's choice to be your concern? What effect does it have on you that somebody chooses to be something or identifies themselves as something or is born a certain way? Why or how does that affect you? None of it should. We are pawns of something so bigger, so much bigger <laughs> that you do not understand. And you choose to go with the grain of what society goes instead of thinking of your own. How does this affect you? How does somebody reading the same book as you do affect you? The only way it should affect you is that is through enjoyment that somebody else is liking the same thing that you like. It may be agreeing on the same thing that you do. But they just happen to just be different in some form or fashion in a way that it does not affect you. It's not infectious. It's not poisonous. It's not a virus. It is just that they have a uh, they have a gender, a ethnic or other form of identity that is different from you. But the mindsets, the thought process, everything, the blood that we prick is all the same. When you really put some thought into that th that situation you, you if you're not stubborn then you will really understand that it means nothing that people are representing other cultures and types that's it i will put it to you like this i have no problem with the concept of these characters i am a little bit on pause about the names of that as the writers seem to believe or think that by using these names, using them in like a badge of honor, like say, let me give you an example, Midoriya, um, Midoriya, Izuku Midoriya on My Hero Academia, who takes the uh, term Ideku, which is supposed to be a derogative, a derogatory term, which I forgot what it meant, but he took it as a badge of honor. That's all well and good for him. It is still up in the air as to whether that is the healthiest action to take um as i if you guys recall of like a a few uh episodes ago and thank you guys because that was a really really downloaded um big that i had an episode regarding the term blurred which sometimes uh sometimes something like that can, and how something like that can actually affect you in the wrong way because we in a black community use the term the in term let me just say it not all of us and i'm not one of them i used to and i stopped a long time ago because honestly the very nature of it shackles us in so much a way that a lot of people don't understand they chose to cope with it they chose to use it proudly but it it, it here's the thing when you use terms like that you're supposed to accept it and allow it for everybody and if we're still out of state in my and just this is just my opinion if we're still at a state where we're still using the term to express ourselves or embrace ourselves but we're still offended by other people who say it that's still a problem that's still a problem right there if we're still feel offended when somebody says it in a in, in a negative way that's still a problem but you use it for yourself think about the logic of that <laughs> think about that and the terms were blurred like i said it's like yeah um that's not what we should be using it for and that's really not a, it's a dangerous term in another sense but you gotta really think use your head for real not to try to make it a cool trendy thing but find out why certain trendy things aren't that good and snowflake and safe space may not be but I do like the characters. I like the design of the characters. I like that they are putting in some representation for those who do read comic books that are non-binary. That is awesome. But I think it's really going, I think they could have done it without going that far. If you guys remember back in the 90s, they decided to go and write the character Northstar as a openly gay character. The character's named Northstar. There's no connection or you know um you know 
puns or anything that goes on with that name. He has a cool name, North Star. He happens to be openly gay. Fine. And there was a HIV angle with it too. I don't know if it was his uh, uh, husband that was um, HIV positive, but they brought all that into the fray and made it a big, it was a huge deal. In fact, I don't know if that comic is still that comic at the time was going for a lot of money. The first edition of that comic was going for a lot of money. I don't know how much that costs now in this day and age, but that was a big, big deal because the AIDS virus at the time wasn't as controlled as it is now. And by the way, I'm people don't talk about it, but the, that, the AIDS virus was considered uncontrollable in a big epidemic up until Magic Johnson had it. And all of a sudden they just found a cure. I'm just saying. <laughs> just I just found it all so weird that it wasn't until Magic Johnson had it that they decided that it was going to be handled properly because Magic Johnson is and forever will be a national treasure. Now it's 2020. This dude is still around. Where at the time a whole bunch of people in their immune systems dropped dramatically. My uncle is one of them in the 80s. No lie. It is it is absolutely crazy and questionable at that. So I also want to point out something else too. But I you know I have a question basically for those who think that non-binary characters or anyone in the LB, L, LGBTQ community shouldn't be in comics. And I wrote this on uh, the ACMG Facebook group as well, but I wanted to point it out of here. How many racist white people got pissed when Stan Lee and Jack Kirby created Black Panther in 1966? Of all times to create a character like that, by the way. 1966, they created that character and stuck by it. And not only just created that character and stuck by it. They, the first appearance of Black Panther, he beat the entire Fantastic Four, the first Stan, the first of many Stan Lee creations. He beat their beloved Fantastic Four. How many racist white people got pissed off about that? I, I guarantee you there was. There was no internet back then, but I guarantee you he got a lot of pe- a lot of messages, uh, mailing uh, letters from his soapbox about that whole thing. Guarantee it. And try, it, I, I highly recommend anybody find Stan. Like they should really make a book of all Stan Lee soapboxes and sell. I would buy so many of Stan Lee soapboxes because he fought. He spoke his mind about so many be- things that were going on, civil rights and everything that was going on back then. You got to understand why Stan Lee is considered one of the greatest of all time and a legend, a, a legend, both living and now passing. And um, he it's, he was an awesome guy. I'm so glly that I got a chance to even take a picture with him. Just say, you know, get near him and have him autograph some things. Just it's just he's a, he's the comic book pope, always a forever man. How many racist white people hated the idea that Muhammad Ali? Beat the shit out of Superman in 1978. The infamous, which I have in my office, uh, I have in my office of the of a print canvas of the cover for uh, Muhammad Ali, Superman versus Muhammad Ali. If you haven't read that book, Mah- the the greatest of all time, Muhammad Ali, actually fought Superman on another planet evenly because they put the red sun to make it even they put him on a planet where there was a red sun and if you know superman has no ability or powers under the red sun so they had a fair fight a fair you know sportsman like fight but at the end soup the superman clark kent the man the head of all things dc was obliterated by muhammad ali like i love it like you should see the pages of the panel pages of it because it shows him actually with bruises, lumps, everything. Like, in all honesty, the way it looked and what we know today, Superman, in all honesty, because of the Red Sun, he should have concussion-like symptoms. Who knows or whatever damage to his head. He should be Rocky. He should be Rocky and Rocky uh, Five right now. <laughs> you know, so that's the way he looked at the end, man. But... I know people, there was people who, a lot of people loved it, but a lot of people who probably didn't like it either at the same time. So, you know, and I'll ask another question. How many racist white people hated the idea that Sam Wilson became Captain America just a few um, years back? Just a few, uh, God, we had this conversation. I, it really killed me. You know, it's the common phrase that I heard from people on social media. That's not 
quote unquote my cap. That's not my cap. That was a clear that was a clear message <laughs> right there. So and then shout out to Marvel Studios for continuing that whole entire situation by giving him the damn shield at the end of in the game. I you could not have had a better ending. You know, they, they there was so many great things about the end of Endgame. It isn't funny, man. So the bigger question that I have here, and the reason why I mentioned those three questions is because what really disappoints me is that of all the people to make these comments were people of my culture and people in my community. We still have some situations regarding, you know, homo uh, homophobia in our community, and it's it's nothing hitting about it. But I find it really hypocritical that we are against a whole nother culture or identity when we were it, when people still are on us again. And like, how are we? It just doesn't make sense. You does anybody understand what I'm talking about here? It doesn't make sense. We cannot be against somebody like of all people that shouldn't be against everybody. Somebody else It's us. We should have more understanding of people being hated on being abused because of who they are it the hypocrisy of that is, is astounding to me but the bigger question i have here amongst all that is what is the difference between their mindsets towards us back then as some folks are to the idea of these new characters now aha uh -huh. <laughs> You, if you come out somebody please give me an answer for that those who disagree with the fact of, of them having a binary character or a even a, even uh, a gay lesbian you know transgender whatever what is the difference between their mindset back then as to, as some folks are to the idea of these characters now none I'll answer that for you absolutely none the writer of all this just happens to be a gentleman named Daniel Kibblesmith, who actually is a writer for the late uh, show with Stephen Colbert. And he's in charge of this project. Now, here's the situation with him. And I wanted to see, because the idea of them creating these characters, you know, you got to figure out, do they, th is there some experience with these, with these characters? Uh, is the person a non consider uh, themselves a non-binary character D does he have or he or she or whatever has friends in the community that are that and they're trying to look out for them but kind of like michael um uh, brian michael bendis did with he made miles morales because his kids are of different ethnicities so he wanted to create a character that was representative and i thought he did very well because miles morales is a very well cared for character and he's one of the most popular characters in the marvel universe in a modern marvel comic universe that the newest character that they had in date and, and trust me um into the spider verse proved it <laughs> that that was a successful character and especially to those who were again to those who were like against the idea of miles morales miles morales is like the most popular new character they've made in the Marvel Universe, bar none. The character's so great, they, brought, they got an Oscar. What? <laughs> okay, so I looked into Daniel Kimball Smith's um, Twitter account. He is a Caucasian male. He is a heterosexual Caucasian male, for what it apparently looks like. And I'm like, that's when I was kind of like, oh God, this is not good, in a sense. I would really and I think this is why there kind of is a backlash because you got a guy like who how much of an understanding of the that I that identified culture does he understand you know is it just him throwing it out there like we should have representation but he doesn't we have these same problems when certain Caucasian people make characters in our nature some do it right like black panther was, was was done right in a sense luke cage needed some you know tuning up after a while but they got it right um and then you had you know miles morales who also was done right he's have uh he's hispanic and black they got him right but then sometimes you get one wrong <laughs> you get a couple wrong uh whether it's a female based character or if it's like a 
a homo uh, a homosexual character a gay lesbian character sometimes you get it wrong and there's a lot of that just has to do with the fact that maybe your intentions are right but the concept wasn't wrong because you didn't go into research you didn't have anybody help you with it i don't know i don't know first of all the, the other thing is that we haven't seen this book has not come out yet so it's really hard to judge completely until this book comes out as to how they're being handled so this the book is coming out soon and it's part of their outlawed uh series which if i actually read outlaw uh i'm i'm liking what they're doing so far because they're doing it it's outlaws uh series it's one of their sagas based on the fact that the champions who are young uh kids are constantly creating collateral damage and now they need more control so now they made a law based on the fact that no kid under 18 or 20 or whatever like that cannot be a superhero at least not without a guardian or whatever like that which kind of makes sense a lot of it feels like it's a new version of civil war because this is kind of like what happened with civil war when they they had the um they had the uh law that you know for the registration law for uh for the superheroes because they need to be government you know uh registered this is kind of going in the same direction with that so and the new warriors is basically going to be the veteran team you know helping to raise you know groom and you know train the younger kids now so this is think of this as like a teen titans type of storyline that's it. I mean, not Teen Titans, a Young Justice type of storyline, because that's where this is kind of going in a sense with this. Um, honestly, if you look at if you look at Young Justice, they did it right. They did it absolutely right in a lot of ways. Uh, if you watch that series, so if you base the two, if you want to compare the two together, like I, you got to see what Young what they did in Young Justice, the TV series um as opposed to what they're going to do here but this like that's it this hasn't come out yet when it comes out i'll take a look at it we'll all take a look at it we'll see how it's done but what it has done is create a lot of intrigue as well so you know i guess shout out to marvel because all the people who actually i guarantee all the people who are making a big deal out of it and some of them there were some things like youtube clips and everything um that of people doing it i think they kind of won in a sense because People are interested. They're hating on it, but that means that they're interested in it. And I think that's going to equate to sales because people are going to want to figure out what they're doing with this character. So I think that first issue is going to be a big factor as to how they're going to play into this and what they're going to do with this character, uh, with these characters here. And if it's successful, they'll be selling more if it's not successful and they feel like the characters despite the names may uh they were given aren't being represented properly then this this uh this series is gonna bomb this series is gonna cons absolutely bomb but it that it just makes the first issue that much more vital and important now so we'll see we'll see how that goes but uh they, I, I i'm interested i can tell you that i do like the art direction as well i should have mentioned who is the artist but i forgot forgive me but the art direction as well the um uh, the penciler whoever that is is awesome and i think that's the other intrigue as to why i want to check this out as well so uh, another comic book i actually got a chance to check out is spider man spider woman number one just came out uh writer carla uh pacheco and she I've, i i'm really let me tell you first of all i have always been a fan of spider woman um you remember i'm an old cat from back in the day so i used to watch the actual cartoon uh and i don't know if i remember back then that the spider woman was in connection with spider-man but and i knew that there was an episode i think in the beginning where spider-man was in there but i never thought I, I didn't see the episode until years later but i loved watch a spider woman then later on when i started reading comic books i started reading the actual spider woman comic book uh even up to the part where she actually died where they killed her off and i was really heartbroken about that back then but they brought her back uh and made her into like a well she was a hydra agent at the time and a spy at the time so it was like they gave her a way more edgier type of look and i thought they did a pretty good job with her and um up until recently where they made her a street level character um she became pregnant which was cool and, but the even worse part was her costume 
I was not feeling the costume because they gave her instead of her giving her a mask, they gave her a pair of shades. The, you know that was it, and I was like, "That's lame. That is, I was not feeling it." This one, I think they figured it out, and they did a great job. You had artist uh, Pere Perez and Paulo uh, Sicaria. If I'm pronouncing that right, I'm probably butchering it. Um, put on their magic to make Jessica Drew look stunning as ever, man. I mean, no, no joke. I almost, I almost did it. That's how bad. That's how really. Um, amazed i am with the it's beautiful artwork it's beautiful beautiful stunning artwork uh Paris works on the first half of the book which uh has her doing odd jobs to make money including being security at some rich person's uh party on a yacht which in time in turn turned into a bigger situation because there was the a group of mercenaries trying to kidnap her and spider woman ended up taking them all out only to get into a situation where she hurled some something happened with her and she hurled some uh plasma or whatever out of her mouth and that led to a to be continued situation right there but then there was another story uh where pa- uh, paulo draws uh does the illustration for and wow i tell you what man knocks it out the park paulo really re- his style with women is really accurate to a point it's really re- like I would I, it, I don't know honestly it doesn't feel exaggerated when he when he uh, draws a woman's figure um it feels very prospectively accurate in a sense uh, well not to all women but like to I've seen really fit women like this a lot like I I work out myself um I'm around a very you know healthy conscience area and also I'm on Peloton so I see a lot of the Peloton trainers and people like that as well I've, I've seen body frames like that before so it looked it looked very natural it didn't look exaggerated or whatever but it was beautifully curved and just proportionally right and the idea with spider woman too is that she ha- she's supposed to have the pheromone power that is supposed to lure men even more and grab men and she's supposed to be like really really attractive so it all makes sense in a matter that she has this figure and form but re- is really awesome about this whole thing is the new suit the new suit is just absolutely fantastic um it's a black version it's a black and red suit the eyes are bigger this time around it's beautifully drawn i am officially back in with spider woman i don't know how long this series is gonna last i hope it lasts quite a bit but i love what they did i also love um flash thompson's agent venom too and they stopped that series i was so mad because the artwork in that one it was phenomenal it was like paint it was like uh the, the panels were painted each panel was painted beautifully it was done right in a way that i've never seen before this guy was powerful um but uh apollo I, I i hopefully he sticks with the series and does it every because it, it, it's just oh man i was so so into this so yeah that is my comic book section of this show i mean who knows We're, hopefully we get to have more talk about comic books on the show as well let's go into some gaming news here because we talked about the fact that reggie fils was going to be a part of the board of directors for gamestop well <laughs> their first their first order of business since the new regime has kicked in and the other guy from pet smart as well um their first order of business during the crisis known as COVID-19, they where every where every state is imploring and ordering other businesses to stay the hell home, close down, shut down. GameStop decides to tell employees to keep their stores open despite cities ordering companies to shut down. Banks, restaurants that do deliveries. medical facilities pet care facilities pet stores at one point wait let me know that's there's there's more i gotta mention it this there's, there's just much more here there's just so much more uh give me a sec grocery stores food banks pharmacies gas stations convenience stores liquor stores for god's sake hardware stores laundromats banks 
auto service pet stores is anywhere among that list anywhere in that list of essential businesses does it say game stores people i i ask you what the hell are they doing in gamestop is this the first order of business that they do they let their employees risk all for the sake of somebody possibly coming in to get a new game or a game controller uh-uh. gamestop believes that their products are important to facilitate remote work distance learning and virtual connectivity that is what they claim that is what they said in response to ign and, and telling ign.com this to me sounds like bullcrap and it actually in all obviously it sounds like they don't want amazon to take advantage of the fact that they have all of the same products all of the same games all of the same controllers everything that gamestop has but can be delivered straight to their house contact free that's what that is coming from that is that i i truly but i there's no doubt in my mind that that's exactly what they're thinking about here and to me that is utter crap that is it's it's mindsets and strategies like that which is why that company is failing first of all i think they should have some type of a gaming store still that people can go to i think i like the idea of what they're attempting to do the test sites that they're doing where they're making it more interactive for the for the crowd but i also think that they should have an online store as well and they do not as structurally uh you know brilliant as amazon does but they have it but i i i i this it's stuff like this which and I'm like, it was this something that Reggie fils actually thought of? I, you know, along with all the other board members, they agreed to this. That's crazy. That That's not a good start, in my opinion. That is really not a good start. And for me, that's a bad morale. If I'm somebody working at GameStop, I would be kind of pissed. You know, and I've worked retail for like about a course of seven years. And it's all the same thing. I've worked not just one store. I've worked like in different stores all do kind of the same structures it's just it's really a best let me tell you anybody who watches the tv show superstore um it's funny as hell but and it's exaggerated in a sense but a lot of that is drop dead accurate it is so drop dead accurate to what goes on in actual retail environments the way that the management treats you the way that corporate office treats you um it's there's so and sometimes the way that some employees act because they are some employees can be educationally questionable <laughs> that's the best way i could put it but in all hindsight like it, it a lot of what they do is real and this is kind of the stupidest thing that i've seen you have an online store you have some of the same stores you do it digitally how about let those let those employees go home be safe and furthermore and it just is it further i and, and to the credit I, I believe from a friend of mine it was said that um the one here in philly in Fa fashion district the new mall that we have in philly they claim to be closed i'm not sure how correct that is or not but uh they may have closed it down but just the idea that it's just that it, that's that's the reason why I will never work at retail again. I'm sorry. It's, it's like never. Not even for management. Not ever, man. So, ah, people, that's 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 your game store for you. So, folks, that will do it for what's new in the world of ACMG. We're going to take a break. Come back. And we got two double dual anime reviews. Future Avengers on Disney Plus and Alter Carbon Sleeved. We're going to talk about both of those right after this. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dax Xavier Josiah, the host of ACMG Presents Talk Time Live, the podcast. You want to catch up with all of our podcast shows and hear from some of the hottest names in all of anime, comics, movies, and games, such as... This is Miley Flanagan, the voice of Naruto. This is Stephanie Shea, the voice of Sailor Moon. This is Ruben Langdon, the voice of Ken Masters and Dante from Devil May Cry. Hey there, this is Kyle Abair, the voice of Ryu from Street Fighter V. This is Chris Battle, character designer of Teen Titans Go. Here's your chance to check out all of that and more on Talk Time Live. 
TalkTimeLive.com provides all of our ACMG content with new and previous episodes, exclusive interviews, articles, and much more. Visit TalkTimeLive.com and let us help you learn to let go, live life, and love all things ACMG. Talk Time Live. This is Charlotte Chung. And Fred Tatashore. And you're listening to ACMG presents Talk Time, Time Live. Live. Do it. And now it's time for our top topic of the week. Ready? Wait. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with our talk topic of the week, and I am going to review two anime features. Uh, one is Future Avengers, and the other one later on will be Altered Carbon Resleeve for Netflix. We're going to start with Future Avengers here. Uh, Future Avengers is a Marvel-based anime created by the studios known as Madhouse. Uh, You may recognize that if you're a hardcore anime fan or otaku, you may recognize the um, Madhouse for such classic anime uh, movies and series as X, Trigon, Hajime no Ippo, uh, aka Ippo actually, uh, aka Fighting Spirit, uh, the one-shot anime for the game final fantasy 7 called last order final fantasy uh 7 which takes you from cloud and tifa journey into and and sephiroth into that land where zephyroth just went like batshit crazy and in one of my favorite series devil may cry shout out to ruben langdon out there and that was originally they originally aired this series on july 22nd 2017 for what i looked up uh it was exclusively for Japan, but Disney decided to give subscribers of Disney Plus this series, with which has premiered for the first time ever in America, with a full English cast. Not just any English cast, by the way. The story of this is said that the Avengers rescued a trio of kids, Makoto, Aidy, and uh, uh, Chloe, uh, which they were students of hydra at the time they were being if you remember just like they did with uh age of ultron they had uh scarlet witch and quicksilver that they kind of experimented on they did the same thing to these kids here so they kind of took some elements from the marvel cinematic universe in here and a lot of the show is kind of taking a lot from the marvel cinematic universe but giving it that anime traditional flair with it and what they did was they rescued the kids and they granted the kids were already granted with superpowers from the experiments that were made by hydra and it gave them the ability to be able to fight crime as well now i guess so now the avengers have taken them under their wing and is training them and grooming them to become future avengers so there's like always when it comes to japan doing some marvel uh, when Japan does Marvel anime and they've done quite a few, uh, I th- actually, I think Madhouse did do the other anime, um, uh, series that they did back then, which was like X-Men, they, which looked really good, but was kind of boring. It's, uh, from an, from a writing perspective and, and narrative perspective, they did Wolverine, Iron Man, Iron Man, I think was probably one of the more successful ones that they did. Cause they ended up stretching that out to a movie. And they also did scar, um, one with black widow and the Punisher, which I actually liked that wasn't bad. Um, which I believe is available on Netflix as well. And they also did blade. So I believe they did, they did those as well. If I'm correct, I could be wrong on that one, but I, I think they're responsible for doing that one too. Um, which means that they do a phenomenal job on the art style and character uh, design of these things. It's just absolutely awesome. And they did the same thing here. They gave it a bit of a, you know, they gave it more to the effect of Marvel, um, of the Marvel Cinematic Universe style, but also had their own way, of, their own style of doing it as well. Mixed that together really well. The characters, the main characters, this as I mentioned, Makoto, aka. Um, hurricane he has the wind power he is voiced by max middleton chloe aka charade is a shapeshifter uh who is played by jenny ellis uh adi is aka codec and again he is a technopathic i st- one of these days one of these days he is played by xander mobus we also have iron man captain america wasp Thor and Hulk, all played by the original cast from 
every from all of the um marvel uh shows uh so in other words iron man is played by once again by mick wingert captain america played by roger craig smith wasp played by carrie walgren uh walgren thor by patrick zeese I, I love patrick zeese he is awesome and one of my um previous guests of my panel of the uh keystone comic-con talk time live panel fred tattishaw returns as the hawk they will never make another replacement for him as hawk <laughs> okay <laughs> Fred Tattashur is the man. Um, so I got to hear him play his role as the Hulk and other characters as well in this series too. So, um, and there are tons and I mean tons of characters from the Marvel Cinematic Universe here. And some of them are from, this was done before, now you gotta remember, this was done before the merger of Fox and, uh, when uh, the acquisition, if you will, not the merger, the acquisition of Fox uh, from Disney. So they were, for some reason, able to have some of the same characters from, you know, some of those other universes. They, I mean, you'll see a lot of characters from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Red Skull, Winter Soldier, Enchantress is in here. The leader is in here, Ares, Ca- uh, Captain Marvel, Iron Fist, Iron Monger, Ezekiel uh, Stain, uh, Deadpool from Fox is in here. He's in like a few episodes. He's hilarious. Bucky, uh, which is the Winter Soldier. Uh, Hawkeye, Black Widow, Black Panther. Black Panther looks really cool in this. Spider-Man looks awesome in this. Uh, Green Goblin, Norman Osborn, aka Norman Osborn is on here. Falcon, Miss Marvel. But yes, Kamala Khan is in the uh, series and she looks awesome as well. Uh, Armani, uh, Ar- I'm sorry, I'm saying Armani. Armin Zola is in his Red Guardian, Dark Star, Ursa Major, uh, which I believe is Red Guard. Uh, the team of Red Guard, uh, the Russian Avengers, is in here. Crimson Dy- uh, Dynamo, Loki, King the Conqueror, which is like one of the biggest, one of the main, uh, and you know, bad guys in this uh, series. Black Bolt, Medusa, and Crossbones, Claw, Odin, Doctor Strange, who looks incredible in here, and Stan Lee made an appearance in this game. Um, I'm sorry, not in this game, in this anime somehow. Now, he plays a hot dog vendor. That was his cameo appearance, but it was great to hear his voice on there as well. So they managed to get him in here from uh from the series uh there's this is only one season it was 26 episodes in here but for the most part i loved it i absolutely love it there is a season two out there i don't think it's as many episodes as season one but it looks like they probably will be bringing it out and is um possibly working on it because they the, it ends it does have somewhat of an open-ended ending but also it is a way that they could have closed it off as well, but it looks like there is more episodes coming for that. But I love the character design. Uh, I love the lighthearted and easygoing story with a lot of action that gives Marvel and uh, anime fans a bang for their buck. I, I honestly, I, I really almost like it better than the American version in the sense that one, I'm an anime fan, and I always like to bring the two together. And two, this was just. A hell of a lot of fun to watch whereas the other one i like the other one the animated series from the other one but i don't know it's just something about it like minute men in action does a great job um even black panther's quest does a great job i think what it comes down to it may be just the character design and just the, the anime look and the fact that it's maybe a little bit more action-packed it, it i i level it up to i compare it to uh earth's mightiest heroes in some cases there's some comedy great comedy moments there's some action-packed moments it actually looks really cool uh so it, this and i'm not saying i don't like avengers assemble but there is just some things on avengers assemble is like the comedy doesn't always pull off right i do like black panther's quest as probably and i'm not being biased because i know jeff <laughs> you know jeff uh thorn who's the showrunner of it but i think that they did a really really good job with the adr for this because you know this is japan based and if you got to do you got to rewrite it to match the dialogue uh in in writing for the cast here and i thought that the actors the these are how great our act our american voice actors are they especially considering that not all of them may have may may or may not have done anime before i know um 
Fred Tatasher, I don't think has ever done an anime before. I could be wrong. I could be absolutely wrong because he's done so much. But Patrick Aziz, uh, he's he's like he plays everything. <laughs> so I, he could do it. I don't think I don't know if Roger Craig Smith has ever played in an anime before because there's different philosophies. There's different there's different ways that you have to conduct yourself in an anime as opposed to like a live a, a U.S. based you know title because the ADR is different. You know, when you do ADR, that means they're rewriting to fit the mouth movement and format of the actual, uh, you know, of, of a show that's based on another country. But when you do an American base, they already format it for just for America. So somebody else from another country will probably have to do ADR for that show. So that's what it comes down to. But I thought they did really well and it fit it fit the characters uh really good i felt i thought they did a great job it just flowed just as easily as all of them all the shows that they've ever done under the same using the same character so um i thought it was really good if you, it this is a great I, I was almost opted to watch it again <laughs> that's how much i enjoyed it I, I really thought it was just a a really good fun time i think your kids would like it i think you as a comic book fan would like it i think you as an anime fan would like it um is there a, there's a ton of fanfare in there and it's a ton of fanfare that is actually pretty good and accurate to the marvel not only just marvel comics but the marvel cinematic universe because they really touch on some things they they you know origin stories they really follow up really well and with the origin stories of people and how they became what and whatever so they they didn't do a i know there were past anime uh fr- you know uh titles from marvel that they kind of changed around the storyline of things this one didn't they really kept into a lot of the stories of a lot of the characters and what they did you know some based on the movie or some based on uh what was going on in the actual comic book so i was very impressed at how this was put together this may be i don't know if this is the best avengers show that i like but this is along the lines of one of my favorites like this black panther's quest and earth mightiest heroes so far as my two, three favorite of the bunch um i thought they did a great job with it and it's just a lot of, it's just really a lot of fun so um like i said there's going to be a second season i think it's going to involve the what is it the uh inhumans so we'll see how that goes from there but i like the first season a lot of fun to check out go out of your way to check it out if like i said if you're a marvel fan anime fan this is everything rolled up into one i am going to give this an a a solid a for me i actually there was nothing i didn't like about this series um i i mean it's a great light-hearted fun series there's nothing i can say it's like they didn't have to try to do any more than what they did for it i think it's entertaining and it was enjoyable uh, so you know i give it a solid a for me uh, as a comic book fan as an anime fan um as a fan of animation period i i just like what they did i i really enjoyed it um and there were some really good intriguing parts to it and just all the fanfare that they had in there how can you not like it so um to go out of your way to check it out if you own disney plus right there so we're gonna flip on to netflix now because as a person who's never watched the TV, the live action version of um, Altered Carbon, I came in to this with the idea. The idea for me after I watched this show was, or this movie was, is this going to make me interested in watching the actual live action TV series? That's what happens because the idea of them coming out with an anime for this t- based on this TV series that speaks volumes of how successful this series has become whenever something becomes a cartoon or an anime series or something else or a comic series that speaks volumes of the success so being me being an anime fan i felt this was a great way to transition me from a uh anime fan into an altered uh, altered carbon fan which i've heard a lot of great things about so but i wasn't really intrigued or wanting to check it out but now that it is an anime form i was like okay and this apparently is a prequel to the events of the netflix live action series so that's even better because i could just swoop, swoop right into it and this could have been the actual intention of them doing this in the first place so the story of this to my understanding is uh on the planet latimer uh takeshi kovix who which is apparently a character that is a part of the live action series is hired to protect a child tattooist while investigating the death of a yakuza boss alongside a uh, no-nonsense ctac 
which probably is a covert uh, uh, agent or operative whatever uh anybody i guess people who watch the series may understand that i'm i don't but takeshi uh is played by ray chase and is looking to find um the murder of the yakuza uh, the local yakuza boss at the same time has to protect a character named holly who is the tattooist for the yakuza and maybe the lead on how he can find the killer Holly is played by Brittany Cox, uh, who I mentioned is a tattooist in search of her parents that was murdered in their uh, in their own home, only to discover that their stacks are still active. Now, I learned a lot by watching this, and apparently, if you haven't watched the art, uh, Altered Carbon series, they're art, they're digitally they have digital souls, pretty much that they use and they put on artificial bodies which are called sleeves and they slip into and they put the digital uh identities in there so basically the idea is they record your person your whole entire personality into these digital uh forms these digital drives which after you die you still live forever through these drives and the only way you could totally technically die is if you kill that drive the drive can be transferred into different bodies at any time i like the concept of this because it's just simple and effective it makes sense it's not trying to overly complex the damn storyline like say the matrix did during after revolution uh after uh reloading a revolution it just made things totally complicated um so i like that idea so okay as i'm understanding this i become more intrigued to be to get into the universe that is Arthur Carbon. So then we have really uh Rayleigh, Ray, I'm sorry, Raylene Kawahara, who uh is also a character in a live action series, makes her appearance uh on the show, uh comes in also with a new sleeve. Both um what is it? Uh la, 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 la. both uh Takeshi and uh, Raylene come in under new sleeves and she decides to go by a different name Gina so she wouldn't be detected or by Takeshi but is backing him up and protecting Holly at the same time she is also protecting Holly because she also has some you know connection or similarities to that as well also from the live action series is uh Tanasita uh, T- uh, Hideki who debuted it in season two and here as well so he is uh in this world he is the head of yakuza uh of yakuza and harlan's world in which he's like the plan is founder so all of these guys are all these uh, characters are connected together and they're trying to search for this and first of all the art style the art style of this movie to me was the prime of this series it really drew me in they had the the character design it mimics it's it's manga it's a manga art style come to life even though even it's in 3d it's totally 3d cgi anime uh animated but the detail is so awesome it, it i mean it looks like a actual manga drawn and now it's in motion they even had the like the outlines and the and the um the sketch lines and everything of their on it so well done it was beautifully done it looks like kind of same, same format that they did with uh i forgot the other um combat sport that uh animators like baki they did they kind of did it in the same fashion too but they get they're these netflix animes these 3d these 3d animated netflix animes are so well done we they've come a long way because I remember, like I said, I've said this before, but I remember um, in the 90s when they started playing around with and experimenting with doing 3D animation, I was a little bit taken back because I like the idea of doing hand-drawn animation. And Japan, when they did hand-drawn animation, they were years, years ahead of uh, anybody else when it came to that. I mean, you, Fist of the North Star, the original Fist of the North Star TV show, and the anime the and the anime movie was out in 1984 that looked like that could have been out like you put that movie out right now it still looks awesome uh and other movies well like x all of those they were all back then tenchi moyu all that was out 
especially Tenshi Muyu. All of that was out. When they did movies, they were out. It was like during the late 80s and 90s. And they looked so far in advance and ahead of what, what um, America was doing or what anybody else was doing at the time. And they all hand-drawn that stuff. So now they, they've stepped up a level and do 3D animation. And now they perfected that. <laughs> and now, not to, I don't think that they actually are better than like say pixar or whatever i think they're on the level of pixar they do they're, they're both equally now but they're doing their own different thing and bringing that the the essence of the anime style beautifully into 3d animation uh and i was impressed with what they did with uh saint Seiya. saint Seiya, the character design of saint Seiya looks exactly like the original anime series just in 3d form now and I, I, I'm really impressed with what they did, but this one in particular really drew me in. I, I just, just to look at it and it's all this beauty and his visual beauty. Uh, just, it was absolutely awesome. The story was a grip. It, it reminded me of just watching uh, the game Yakuza. It was, it really felt like that. It was really not too, you know, uh, I enjoyed it in the sense that, you know, it was action packed, had that John Woo feel, had that, um, had the John Woo feel, had like sort of the um, the raid type of feel format for it, you know. I thought they did a really good job with this. It wasn't the best thing I've ever seen in my life, but it was a really enjoyable movie that I would love to watch it again. But did it do the job of getting me interested in watching the TV series? And I say yes. I am going to officially watch the actual live action series now as a result of it. I love what they did. I understand the premise. I understand why people are digging it now. So I am now going to invest in the live action series because of how much I enjoyed this. So if you are an anime fan, I can't speak for you as a altered carbon fan, but if you're an anime fan, you you may actually enjoy this uh, really well. It, now, there are some anime uppity uh, people out there that may be traditionalists in a sense like I am in a, in a sense that you may actually like the hand-drawn tradition but sometimes I know I gotta admit they have done a great job they're doing so much better with these 3d animated movies um sh- shout out to Ultraman too because I'm not an Ultraman fan but that anime was all that <laughs> that anime made me a fan of Ultraman that they played and I, hopefully they'll make them more of that too but I, I am so excited. I am so very much excited um, to really see the live action series now because of this. I thought they did a great job. So to me, um, I don't know. I don't I, I can't think of anything wrong that I didn't like about this anime either. Whether it was bad or the character direction was uh, or the narrative was bad, the, the, the story of the characters. It was just it was just solid. It was really solid to me. I was like, uh, so if anything, I if when it comes to giving it a solid grade, I have to give it a solid A because one for me, uh like is it the greatest anime of all time? No, not by a stretch. Uh did it do anything visually for me? Yes. I thought it stimulated me uh very well in a way that I was intrigued and watched it all the way through and enjoyed it all the way through. I liked the voice acting in it as well. Uh that was well done. And just the concept, everything it was, you know, had that matrix kick to it, which they were, I'm pretty sure they, the whole entire franchise was, you know, going for. And again, it led me to want to know more about the universe and everything that's going on to it. So yeah, I, I think it was a success for me. I personally, for me, I give it an A. Other might not think of it that way, but I like, I watch it again with no problem. I didn't see it. Nothing st- stood out for me in a sense that made me and and nor was i looking for anything like for me to really think that something's wrong i have to it has to really be blatant and nothing blatant to me came out where i just like it stopped my brakes and was like okay that doesn't make sense that doesn't make sense this doesn't look right this doesn't you know it nothing nothing out of it stuck out of me so for me as as a anime fan i dug it so i i I would i would if i give it a b plus I would be lying in a sense because it, it did, I didn't find anything. I'm not going to pretentiously grade downgrade an anime or think or think of the anime because for my personal enjoyment, I dug it. So I gave it a solid A for me. It's a go. I will rewatch it again, and it's intriguing me to watch the show. So go out of your way to check it out, you know, and uh, see what you think about it as well. You may like it, you may not like it, but hey, I thought it was awesome. I thought it was absolutely awesome and uh anime is just stepping up to another generation ahead of our game to which we have not yet seen yet so 
for, awesome for that right there folks that will do it for this edition of talk time live thank you guys so very much i hope i was able to entertain you during your time of quarantine into the house please please i beg you if you truly think you're intelligent and smart do the right thing stay in do it unless you got some things you got to do uh look out for those that you love look out for the elderly look out you know thank you to every medical staff including the ones that are in my building um that is doing their thing out there working tirelessly hours on end without mask and just risking themselves for the safety and healthy of us please if you're if your town city or state is telling you as to stay home if you don't have anything to do out here if you're not taking care of anybody's anything stay ass at home take they're trying to they trying to get through this they're trying to you know keep us from the longer the longer that we're, we're taking to not listen the longer i think the process is going to take for them to really get a grip on what's going on with this thing we do not you kind you you guys claim that you want to get things done or you want to attend uh, certain events well do the right damn thing listen to them let things happen the way it need to so folks again thank you so very much thank you for supporting us check me out on instagram at dexavier underscore josiah you can also check out my official website at talk time live at talktimelive.com you can also subscribe to the show on spotify iHeartRadio, apple podcast google podcast podbean stitcher radio and all amazon devices you can also check us out on pocket cast as well if you go if you kick with that as well but thank you guys so very much uh there should be a select start episode this week coming um we're, we're gonna like i said with all the, with depends on what news is out there and what whether i have a review of something or i want to look back at something we'll try to figure it out at this time but the uh i know for a fact that I, we're counting down the days to Final Fantasy 7, which I did get, so I'm definitely going to talk about that. Um, also, uh, Trials of Mana is going to be a game I'm going to review down the line as well. Next week, however, I have I wish I could, but it'll probably extend to the week after. So if there's any news, gaming news, I will do a select start if there's anything worth talking about in the world of gaming. But it may not be due to the fact that there's you know with everything shutting down it may not be that much news who knows well actually it's not true because there may be a nintendo direct coming next week so that might be worth to, uh this week actually so that might be worth talking about this week we'll see if that actually comes out but uh i know next week there will be one because i'm going to be reviewing uh one piece pirate warriors 4 which is coming out this friday so i'm gonna need time to play it and review it from that point on see if it's worth getting but it looks interesting so i am uh i'm looking forward to checking it out i am looking very much forward to checking it out as well so um check it we'll keep you posted we'll keep posted this sunday we'll see what we got as well uh in the world of our favorite fandoms to talk about if bloodshot does come out i may actually uh eventually i may go back and try to review that as well see how that is too uh because at least it for what it's worth it's we gotta at least check it out and <laughs> give Vin Diesel a chance. So, all right, folks, that will do it. On behalf of myself, this is Dak Xavier Josiah saying, learn to let go, live life, and love all things anime, comics, movies, and games. This is ACMG Presents Talk Time Live. We are out of here. Folks, thank you again, and please be safe. Music for this episode is provided by Game Chops. Check out these great chiptune tracks and more at music.gamechops.com.